Greetings, folks. In this video, we're going to take a look at the superposition theorem for DC. Superposition allows you to calculate current and voltages in a circuit that has multiple sources, current sources, voltage sources, that are connected in a non-trivial way. In other words, not just some voltage sources in series or current sources in parallel, but more complex configurations. So let's take a look at a circuit that I've thrown here into uh, Tina Ti. And we've got two voltage sources and a series of resistors. Now before we go any further, it's important to uh, note that superposition requires the circuit, or the function for that matter that you're looking for, be a linear bilateral. In other words, um, a straight line kind of uh, response. Now that will be the case if all you have are voltage sources or current sources and resistors in this DC circuit. Um, if you had more complex things like, uh, let's say, diodes or transistors, that might not necessarily be the case. You might not be able to use superposition unless you have some uh, a priori knowledge of, of uh, how those devices are operating. Uh, but as long as you just have voltage and current sources and resistors, you can use this fine. Um, as far as functions, works for currents and voltages, won't work for power, because power, of course, is a square function. Power is proportional to the square of voltage or current. So it doesn't work for power. However, you can find the voltage or the current for a resistor and then compute the power from that. All right. So what we do is for every single source, we create a brand new circuit that only considers the contribution of that particular source. So in this case, we have two sources. We're going to create two brand new circuits. And what we do is all of the other sources we replace with their ideal internal resistance. That would be a short for a voltage source or an open for a current source. So we're going to create two brand new circuits for this. One where I only have E1 and E2 will be replaced with a short and a second one where we only have E2 and E1 would be uh, shorted out. So if we had uh, you know, something more complex with, let's say, four voltage sources and a couple of current sources, and I start with this one, all the other voltage sources would be shorted. Those two current sources would be opened. And then I would go to the second voltage source and I would do the same thing. This would be shorted. This would be shorted and current sources would be open. When, when we finally got to the current sources, I would consider one current source, all of the voltage sources would be shorted, the other current sources, uh, current source would be opened, and we would go from there. So as many sources as we have, that's how many circuits we're going to get. So here we have two sources, so we're going to have two equivalent circuits. And you can see I have exactly what I described, one with uh, the first source and one with the second source. So what I've done here to, to keep it a little bit easier I've uh, denoted all the components in this first circuit with a, an extra A behind them, like R1A and, uh, you know, voltage BA. And in the second circuit, everything has a B after it, all right? So what I'm saying here is if you compute a voltage or a current in this circuit, let's say um, AA here, you would then compute the same thing, AB, in this circuit. And if you added those two things together, of course, being cognizant of the signs, that would give you the A over here in this circuit, all right? So in the original circuits, you know, with a single source, we can analyze these using basic series parallel uh, techniques. So for example, if I was interested in finding B, node B, um, we would notice in this circuit, these two resistors are in parallel. So I would treat that as one resistor that uh, winds up being in series with R3. And that combo of two resistors is in parallel with R2, which is then that whole thing in series with R1. So we could take a voltage divider, right, between R1 and this series parallel combination. That would give us voltage at node A. Then we could do um, another voltage divider, using that as the input, between R3 and this parallel combo. And that would give us node voltage B. Over here would be a similar situation, except that... Uh, we would find R1 and R2 are in parallel over here, and that would be in series with R3. That combo is in parallel with R4, and then finally in series with R5. So if I was going to do the same thing, I'm interested in finding a voltage at node B. 
we would take R5, do a voltage divider with this big series parallel combination, and that would give us uh, the voltage at node B. Take that voltage, add it to this voltage, we get the voltage in the original circuit. That can be a little tedious, obviously, if you have very large circuits with multiple sources, you know, several sources. And in a case like that, you might actually find it uh, quicker to do something like a nodal analysis or a mesh analysis. But in any case, now let's um, just check this through, right? As long as we haven't built up, we'll come up here, we'll do a DC analysis, calculate node voltages. And I'm just going to stick with the voltage first, then we can look at currents. So um, I mentioned B, node B. So uh, this circuit is giving us uh, 1.38 volts at node B, and you can check this with a manual calculation. And over here we have 7.36 volts. So if we add those together, right, we're going to be looking at, you know, a little over eight and change, about eight and a half. Um, and in fact, we see 8.74, right? 8.74 is that equal to, you know, 1.38 plus 7.36, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, looking at node A over here, 7.59 plus roughly 0.46. If you, add, you know, round this off to 0.46, add 0.46 to the 7.59, and you get your 8.05. You can also do this with the currents. So I'm going to take my little probe over here. And I can see that the current through uh, R1 over here, I don't know if you can see it too well, but it is showing that the current is flowing in this direction. All right, it's going from the power source towards A, which we would expect given this configuration, but that's 4.41 amps. And then if I came over here for um, R1B, uh, then this thing shows up as a negative uh, 400. 60 roughly milliamps, right? About 0.46 amps. Um, again, that arrow is very uh, uh, hard to see here, but um, it is saying it's going in this direction toward A as a negative value, meaning as a positive value, it's going this way. So I can just add the value I had over here, right? The uh, 4.41 and this negative 0.46, and we're going to get a little under 3 on that. And in fact, we can see it's 3.95, right? So it's um, you know, just because of the, the, the carried precision on here, these things are not going to come out perfectly because this is um, you know, giving us more digits really than we have um, as far as the true answer, right? Capital T, true answer. Um, but within the um, carried precision round off error, that works out perfectly. So you can do this with any components. You could do this with a bridged voltage. Um, you know, like the voltage from uh, here to here, for example, and if you had a meter out here, um, you basically just have to use series parallel analysis techniques and then combine the results, like I said, being cognizant of those signs, all right? So don't forget those minus signs. And there you go.